All right, guys, so here I'm going to show you how to do the inverse foot. And working with the inverse foot, it's kind of an old school way to uh, do a foot roll. I talked about the group foot method and the concept of how moving the groups around can give you different type of deformations or um, movement. So um, what we're going to do here is the inverse foot in which we're going to uh, build a bone system in charge of IK. I'll build a quick leg again real quick, just do it generically. <clears throat> Make sure I knee my stuff appropriately. And from there, I'll build the inverse foot, which will control its pivots. Now, the good thing about the inverse foot, a lot of video game um, engines will take the inverse foot and have not a problem with it, because it's in the bone hierarchy, it's in the bone system. But when it comes to group foot method, they will not take those groups. So when you bake your animation, you gotta make sure you get the bones that have the animation. It should go all the way down the pipe when you go to bake your animation. I'll be making a video on that later on today. Um, but today we're gonna just gonna go over how to do the inverse foot, the order of operations. It's really not that hard. Um, the thing I can emphasize for those that are in my class, take notes. There's a lot of people not taking notes, and I noticed they're asking me kind of the same questions. And as I go, just stop and say, Sean, could you repeat that? It's not a problem. It's what I get paid for. All right. So I'm going to go in here and grab uh, the bones here. We'll just make a generic leg here. Do a double knee. It's the biggest knee you've ever seen. Maya's doing a little elephantitis, which it does sometimes, and exaggerates the scale of her bones. Again, the reason why I like double knee is the knee, double knee works really well. Um, ignore that noise in the background. Um, so what that does, <clears throat> if I can show you real quick, under RP solver, because we have a leg and we want a pull vector connected to it. Click on the top of the leg, click on the heel. What that does is when I deform, and this is a real quick review, you'll get a nice double knee, flat kneecap kind of thing going on. Mine's a little bit exaggerated, but that's fine for now. I just want to show you how to build the inverse foot. Let me go and pull out for a second. So now what we're gonna do, we want to uh, name our IKs. So let's make the rest of our IKs here because it's just gonna be easier to um, just be organized. You always wanna be organized. So SC solver, I'm gonna click on the uh, heel to ball. So we're using the same concept for the um, foot roll. We're using the IKs, or for the group foot, we're using the IKs all the way down the pipe. SC solver again, just make sure it's there. And you can always hit the G key and just activate the tool again. So we've got these guys all set up. So we'll call this, um, we'll pretend this is a one-legged pirate. The other leg's just wood. All right, so we we'll just won't give it, we'll get too particular with the name. So we'll just do ankle, IK. Normally you put right IK, left IK. We'll do a ball IK. All right, loud singing teacher. Let's go to the toe IK, toe. Okay. Oh, snap. All right. Now that we got this all set up, I try to keep it real when I do my lectures. Now that we got this all set up, let's go ahead and make the inverse foot. Now to do so, what we can do is the concept of the inverse foot is when you're making it, I can just go up here too. When you're making it, you're going to be starting here at the heel, making the bone go all the way across to the toe. Now be careful. It's easy to forget and put it here, which I did uh, when I was in class and had to follow my own advice because it was the second time I was doing it. You want to click where the heel's at, and then you want to go, and I keep my finger on the V key, and you can do the snap to grid if it, if it helps you keep things straight. So I'm gonna go here to the toe, and then from there we're going to, you know, get in closer so you can see what's going on. Keep my finger to the ball, keep my finger on the V key, and then keep my finger on the V key and go to the ankle. There we go, and hit enter. So what we did was made an inverse. This is why it's called an inverse foot. And what this does, this allows you to actually now put the IKs underneath each one of those bones. Now, if you're running into trouble and you keep selecting the wrong thing, just make layers. Some of you guys saw me do this in class. After they're all named, just make layers for the bones. So if we don't want to accidentally select the leg, the main leg, just call a main leg layer. And make sure you delete these layers when you send this off to the animator. Having a lot of uh, layers is bad if you're referencing, even if you're importing, because those layers are gonna come in and it can get really messy and nobody knows what they're looking at. So you wanna keep the rig pretty darn clean when you export it out. That goes for uh, games and even animation. And it also depends on what proprietary software they're using. Maybe they'll have a hide all layers at one time or select by group or type. Um, this all depends on what your art director is set up and your producer. All right, so we got this all set up. 
we do an inverse foot here. I'm going to add selected, right click, add selected object. I can template it too, so I can keep it visible and template it, and that way it doesn't really affect my scene. These are my inverse joints here, and this is what I usually call this. Just I'll do this so you can know. I call this inverse root. A lot of times I'll do that. Or just inverse heel if you want, whatever is logical for you. The next one down the pipe, don't want to do the IK, I want to do the bone. We'll just call this inverse. I'll just INV is what I put. Call this toe. And this one will be inverse heel. Not hell, because it, that would if it if it didn't work, we could rename it. Nah, there's a joke there. All right, and the, and the one on the back here is inverse ankle. Now a lot of people get confused when they set this up. They go, "How come when I move the inverse ankle, nothing happens?" Well, it's really not made to do anything. It's just to lock down this IK so that we don't get any secondary animation or the ankle breaks. We want it to keep it straight and narrow. So we got here. We want to keep it steady, I should say. We got here our inverse bone. So what we need to do now is grab our IKs and place them underneath the bone. So I'm going to grab the IK, do old school parenting, shift select the bone, hit P, IK, bone, P, IK, bone, and P. And watch what we get. So now when we grab this, I can rotate, hit the E key. You can see I get a push off heel, kind of cool. And also we get the nice little uh, secondary motion here. We can actually do a whole complete foot tip movement. And you can combine these together. So I can go in here and do a little push up. See that? Pretty cool. So we get like a real realistic uh, foot moving foot. And then you can actually uh, animate your character. You know, sneaking, squishing a bug with his toe, um, being a ninja, whatever you, whatever you can think of. Sorry about that. My Skype popped up there. I'm meeting with an intern. All right, so we got this here all set up. All set up. So now you'll notice we can move the whole thing and the leg will move. Pretty cool. So the inverse foot acts like a controller for our object. Now the only problems you may run into when we go to scale our whole rig down is just to make sure the groups are parented appropriately because sometimes you can run into problems if you don't have the right order of operations and your inverse foot will not scale correctly. We can get into organizing our rig later on. I do have an older video for organizing your rig which has uh, parent constraints, so it's not impossible to get your rig to scale or scale up or scale down, but you just gotta be careful. All right, so what we wanna do now is we wanna actually make controllers. Now, I showed you how to set up a set SDK for the group, but this time we're gonna make controllers and you can do the same thing with the group itself. So I'm gonna go in here and uh, make some controllers really quick. Just make a little generic one here. I'll give you guys a script, and for those that are watching YouTube, I can give a link to a script that actually is really nice when a creative crash, which allows you to connect your joints. Um, it allows you to get your controllers to have the same rotation axes as your joints. Because not every model, as we all know, is built equal and the feet may not be completely straight. But the script I'm going to give you allows you to get those things to be on the same axes by using the group method, believe it or not. It's actually kind of nice. All right, so we got a controller there and that's gonna control the movement roll of the ball. I'm going to hit control D and use the same one. Keep my finger, hit the W key, keep my finger the V key, snap it in. Pretty cool. And that's pretty much all we need is these two because we're mainly animating this one and this one. Remember I said this guy doesn't do shiznits. I try to keep it real. Um, He doesn't do squat. Nothing. He doesn't do anything. Just to lock it down so we get our movement. Let's do our final controller. Keep my finger the V key. Go on, uh, scale this up. There you go. That's the scale noise. If you didn't know that, it's kind of new to Maya. Um, so let's go W key. Move it in. <laughs> I'm mirror tool right now, so that's fine. I'll just leave that. I got my mirror um, movement tool um, active. Let's go move this down. All right, cool. So what we need to do now, we got to freeze our transforms, and we got to freeze our transforms on these guys too. Let's go and freeze transforms on all controllers. Let's do it now. Modify, freeze transforms. And the reason why is so the animator can zero this out. I have to do this on a foot. I made one foot amazing, then it was really late at night. I made the other foot, and I'm like, oh, crap. I forgot to zero it out. I know it's going to go back to haunt me, so you do want to get into that habit. And I have to go back and rebuild the foot. And yeah, I'm not happy about it. All right, so now let's do this as main control, main foot control. 
C N T. You can put C N T if you want to. C R T C um, C N R T L if you want to. It's up to you. Just leave out the O's. Whatever abbreviation works for you. I'm going to delete his history. Notice he has history. He has history. He has history. So you go edit. Now you want to be careful with this. You want to edit delete delete by type history, not all. And if you ever do all, you only want to select non-deformer history um, if you're working with rigs. Now, if you're just modeling, you can delete all your history um, when you're ready. But delete by type history, we're going to non-deformer on these guys because I'm in rig mode, so I'm going to always remember that. So I'm going to hit non-deformer history. What that does, it deletes everything, and if anything was skinned in here, we'll get into painting weights later. I have a part one on it. I'll do a part two later on. Um, you don't affect your rig. Because if you delete by type history, everything can go away. You can strip the rig from being bound to the skin. There's a new plugin that I was um, uh, pointed to. One of my former students, he actually works at 343. He's a really talented artist, and showed me about this new skinny tool. It's a plugin for Maya, which I think I'm going to adopt. And the reason why is because Maya's weights still have a little bit of trouble. But this plugin is apparently amazing, and everything I've seen on it so far is pretty cool. And we'll get into that later. All right, so we've got a controller. Froze a transform. Froze a transform. Froze a transform. Good. Let's give it a name. So we'll call this uh, ball inverse control. And we'll call this. I'll just call this um, foot inverse control. It controls mainly the whole foot. So we grab this guy, grab this guy, grab this guy, and grab this, and hit P. Now we're not done, because if we go to move this guy, nothing is going to happen. So what we want to do is parent, hard parent that controller to this guy here, and hit P, and watch this. This is the cool part. So now I can move this guy and control him. But you'll notice they're not in charge of our objects, are they? They're not in charge of our bones, so let's do that. Now, you've got to be careful. Remember, parent constraint is a different order of operations than regular parenting. Regular parenting, you grab the child, then the parent, and hit P. Parent constraint, you grab the child, you grab the parent first. Parent first, then shift select the child, then do parent constraint, because it simulates a child-parent relationship. So we need to put this guy, oops, go back a little bit control Z and I'll even go back before I parented these two guys make sure they're all by themselves yay so we're gonna grab this guy shift select the bone constraint maintain offset on add and the reason why you turn maintain offset on is so that like you heard me before Maya takes into account the object both objects in 3D space and does not shift them according to their new relationship. Grab this guy here. I'm gonna hit the G key to repeat the last process. Boom, all right, so we now we know these guys are controlling these bones. Unfortunately, they're not gonna really move because they're in a hierarchy system right here. So we gotta kinda change that movement, change those movement restrictions. So we're gonna grab this controller. I went back a few steps. I unparented these guys. I'm going to grab the control. Now I'm going to parent them. Grab this guy here. Old school parenting. Child, then parent, hit P. And check it out. Now we have movement. So I can move, rotate. And I can move this guy here. Rotate. Look at that. Cool. Then we have a full control. Look at that. Pretty nice. So real quick review of what I did. Really not that hard. And I'll just go through it verbally and point out what I created. So I created an inverse foot. I V-snapped them to each joint. Then I parented the IK to these new joints. After I created that, I also made sure I was all organized, named everything. I created two controllers. Froze out their transforms, made a main controller, froze out his transforms. I got each one of these controllers and I parent constraint the new inverse foot bone that I made I um, parent constraint each one of them to these controllers. So the controllers control them and allows me to have an external um, controller to be able to move things around. And the reason why you want to do that, so the animator can zero things out, 
and he doesn't have to guess where the next step is going to be. It's actually pretty linear and straightforward. And you can also lock these out, which you saw me do in my last video, because animators will break stuff. I'm an animator and a rigger, and I break stuff and yell at myself. So we made these parent constraint, these joints, to these controllers. From there, I hard parented this guy to this guy, and then I put them underneath that guy. Look at that. And when I put everything underneath here, remember, you want to grab this controller, this controller, and the root inverse, which we had before and place them underneath him and move it around. Now, for some reason it breaks or it isn't working, check your order of operations. The best thing to do is to get this parent constraint relationship all set up and then shift select your root and parent it under him. Once you're done with that, then you can go about parenting him to him to prevent any kind of confliction or breaking within your hierarchy. That's about it with this one. Um, I'll make another one about arms I have some animation to do. I have a lot of videos today. Wish me luck. It's going to be a long day.